Welcome to the first ever in May sewing pattern tutorial video. Ever since I started my brand and probably over the last like 6 to 12 months, I've had a lot of people messaging me and commenting asking if I sell my own patterns or will be selling them in the future and I thought that that would be a really good thing for me to start doing for my business because I have a lot of patterns that I obviously don't use anymore. I've discontinued a few pieces and rather than just having them sit there, I thought it'd be really good to show you guys how to use them and you can make your own. As well as some of my newer pieces or some of the stuff that I have online, I'll slowly be adding those in. But yeah, for the time being, I thought the best pattern for to start with <laughs> would be the What's Left bag, which is this cute little bag here. I designed it with the intention of using my scrap fabrics that's why it's called the what's left bag because it uses what's left over and i thought also i may as well start with the what's left bag because it's one of my newer favorite pieces and a lot of people love it and it's also pretty easy to sew if you're a beginner sewer it's definitely doable um i would recommend maybe practicing with zips first because there is a zip on it obviously and if you've never done zips before then it you might find it a bit difficult but you don't have to do anything like overlocking or zigzag stitching there is maybe one or two parts where you'll have to but you can also just skip it and do another way which i'll talk about in the video the other thing for a beginner if you've never really sewn before have a bit of a practice about like doing straight stitches and working with curves because obviously this is curved and you have a lot of straight stitching to do so maybe have a little bit of a practice with that and also if you don't want to do it with wadding because this is my first time doing it with the wadding rather than with um, cotton double gauze which is what i normally line it with rather than doing it with the wadding you can take that out and just do it with the outer fabric and the lining fabric instead if you'd like. If you do it that way, I find it a lot easier to sew with and then you're not going through so many pieces of fabric, especially if you have a, an older machine or a smaller machine that maybe isn't cut out for too much like heavy duty sort of stuff. Before we begin sewing, you'll need the What's Left Bag pattern, which you can find linked in the description below. It's available on my website now for you to purchase. Once you download the pattern, you're going to print out the first page and have it printed with the original settings. And you're going to just test this little box here and make sure it's five by five centimeters. Then you're going to cut one side of your pieces of paper and just sticky tape them or glue them together. The printout versions that you have will have the page numbers that need to go next to each other on the papers so it's not as confusing. And then once you've put them all together you're going to cut them all out. I leave about a millimeter or two um, seam allowance just around the black line. Then once you're done cutting out these, it's time to move on to the materials. So you'll need a main fabric and a lining fabric. I'm using the same for both. You can use different if you'd like. And then you'll also need wadding if you are using the wadding option. If your machine can't go through multiple layers, maybe take out the wadding as well and just do the lining layer and the main fabric layer. When cutting your fabric, you'll just have to make sure that your patterns are along the grain line, which is what that arrow is placed there for, and then cut out all of your pieces according to what's written on the pattern papers. Don't forget to also do your notches, which are those little lines there. The notches just help to align everything and figure out where you need to place pieces when you're sewing. And then there is also two notches that you'll have to do on the bottom panel, which is just in that folded part. Just follow along the cutting instructions on the pattern paper. You'll just have to make sure that you have your outer fabric and your lining fabric. And then if you are wanting to use wadding or cotton double gauze, which is what I normally use, then also cut those parts out as well. The other materials you'll need are a 12 inch dress zip. You can also use a chunky zip as well. And then you'll also need a pack of two D rings. I got the 32 millimeter one by accident. You'll actually need a 38 millimeter one. Moving on to sewing, we're going to start with doing the straps and basically what you have to do is place the two pieces of fabric, which is just the main fabric, place those together and then place the 
wadding on top if you're using wadding and then you're basically just going to pin around the outside and stitch a straight stitch on the longer parts of these straps. You're going to be sewing over three layers here and if you're having a bit of trouble with it make sure that you switch over to a quilter's needle because you're going to be going through the wadding which is a lot thicker. Just sew a straight line all the way down to the end, back tack and then swap and then go around and do the other side as well. You're going to be leaving about a half a centimetre to a centimetre seam allowance on either side. And then it should look like this when you're done, just make sure you've gone through all three layers and you haven't missed part of it. And then we're going to do that for the other strap as well as all of the main body pieces that are going to also have the wadding attached to it. So the other parts that have the wadding attached to it, if you're using wadding, is the bottom panel and you just have to align that up with the notches and then pin it and do a straight stitch all the way around. And then you're also going to do that with the main fabric for the body part of the bag and the body of the wadding. And you only really have to do this along the longer edges of these parts. Before we start working on the actual bag, we're also just going to do the pocket first. We have to hem this edge here and you can overlock it if you have an overlocker or do a zigzag stitch and then fold it over one centimeter and sew a straight stitch across the top there to make it a hem. Or you can simply just fold it over twice and do another straight stitch across the top there just to hide the frayed edge. Here's what it should look like once you've finished doing that. Now we're going to swap over our presser foot and put on a zipper foot instead of the standard one, which is what this looks like. This part might be a bit difficult if you haven't really sewn before or you're still new to doing zips, but basically just go really slow with it and take your time. What you're going to do is grab your zipper tab and then place it about just underneath where the metal part of the zipper is. I think it should be the same for chunky zips as well, but you're just going to pin that in place and then we're going to sew a straight stitch about a centimetre away from where that little silver part is. You want to make sure that you're not hitting it with your needle because you will break your needle. And then I'm just showing you as an example what it'll look like, but basically once you've sewn that part, um, you'll fold it over and it'll kind of sit flat. And then the other edge, you're also going to press down a bit and then that will also be folded over the top of the zip. So it'll kind of become like a little casing for it. And then you'll do a top stitch over the top of that. When you're sewing this, just take it nice and slow and then also you can just use the hand wheel and turn the needle as you go instead if you're finding it difficult. Once you're done this is what it'll look like and then we're going to flip it over if you'd like you can also press these parts with an iron so that they do stay flat but because I'm using linen if I just press it with my hands it stays pretty flat anyway then again we're going to flip that back part over and kind of encase our zip and I flip it around to the top so this is the good side of the zip and I'm just going to pin it in place and then we're going to just do a straight stitch across the top there again if you want to just use your hand wheel to turn it so that you're not hitting that metal part that's a better option than just sewing straight through it This is what it will look like, so very neat and tidy. And then we're going to do the same for the opposite end, but you're going to have to open the zip up so that you don't hit it while you're sewing. So the best way to do that is to kind of use two pins just to hold it in place because you wanna make sure that that top part is still as close as possible to being closed. 
Then once you're done with that, you're just going to fold that back over, make a little casing sort of, and with that other edge, it's going to be about half a centimeter as well. Um, you're just going to fold that back over as well, pin it in place and sew a top stitch over the top. Then once you're done with that, you're going to take it to your main part of your bag that has the wadding attached to it. And you're going to align the zip up with the notch. It's basically going to be in line with the fabric. Just pin it in place to hold it. Make sure that your zip is facing the fabric. So the good side of the zip will be facing the good side of the fabric. Once you've finished pinning these in place, you're going to go back to your sewing machine and you're going to sew the zipper onto the fabric. And then when you start sewing, you're actually going to start from where the zipper starts inside of the zipper tab, not from where the zipper tab starts. When you get to the end where the zipper actually is, you're going to want to stop and then take your presser foot up and needle out and then close the zip and then go back to sewing like normal. This just makes sure that you're not going to accidentally break your needle by hitting the zip or your presser foot might get stuck as well. to move on to the next side and we're just going to do the exact same thing again making sure our notch is lined up with where the zipper tab fabric starts and then pin it in place also make sure that the good side of your fabric is facing the good side of the zip and then we're going to start sewing from basically where the top of the zip is all the way down to the other end making sure that the zip tab isn't completely closed off And then this is what it should look like. I also just double check to make sure the zipper closes as well because sometimes if you sew close to the zipper, it'll catch the fabric there. And this is what the top of the bag should look like since we've missed the top of the zipper tab. And the reason we do that is that so we can enclose it. We're going to put together the two main parts of the bag where the zipper tab is. We're going to pin that together and then we're going to do a straight stitch up to where the rest of the stitch is that's connecting to the zipper tab. You're going to want to make sure that you're not actually catching the zipper tab. You want to keep that separate from the main part of the bag. I also still use the zipper foot for this because I find it easier because the fabric will kind of sit to one side a lot more and it won't bunch up as much. Then once you've done that it should look like this and then you're going to go ahead and do that for the other side as well. Now we're going to add the lining, which is the inside of the bag, and you're going to basically do the exact same thing as what you did, except you're going to do it on the wrong side of the zip, and you want to make sure that all of your frayed edges are facing the same way. You don't want to be putting the lining on the side that the wadding's on, because then the frayed edge will be facing the zipper. Remember to start from where the top of your zipper is, not from the top of your zipper tab, and just take your time with it. Don't forget that when you get to the zipper, you're actually going to have to stop and pick up your needle and then also close the zip and then restart again, just so that you don't hit the needle or catch it on your presser foot. And then once you finish one side, you're just going to repeat and do it for the other side. Then once you're done with that, it'll look like this and we're going to take it to the ironing board now and we're going to press it just so that the fabric is nice and flat and it also doesn't catch on the zipper. 
Then we're also going to do a top stitch across the very top of the fabric next to the zipper. This will just give it a nice finishing touch as well as hold the fabric in place so that it doesn't catch on the zipper when you're opening and closing it. Just like how we did the main bag part and closed off this edge, we're going to do it for the lining. You're just going to pin it in place and sew to where the stitch starts. And then make sure that the zipper tab is just left by itself, it's not caught on any of the fabric. And then we're going to move on to the pocket bag. Basically, you're just going to add this onto the lining of the fabric. You can just pick whatever side and put it onto just the lining, not the wadding or the main bag. Pin it in place and then sew all the way around the edge. You're going around a curve here so just take your time if you haven't done curves before and you're finding that you're just sewing off the edge of the fabric. Then once you're done you can leave it like this or you can sew a straight stitch from the bottom of the pocket all the way through the middle up to the top of the pocket and this will just make it into two compartments. Now we're going to add the lining bottom panel and we're just going to start by pinning that to the side that has the pocket bag and we're going to sew all the way around. Make sure you line your notches up and there will be a little bit of fabric left off at the end as well so don't worry about that. So all the way around just with a straight stitch and once you're finished with that you're going to do the exact same thing for the other side of the lining. So you're going to pin it all in place where the notches are and then you're going to leave a gap when you sew this. So you're going to sew from the top all the way down until about halfway or just wherever you feel like you want to stop. Stop and then leave about a three or a four inch gap in sewing and then pick it up and start sewing again just to kind of close it so you'll end up having a hole at the bottom of the lining. This step isn't really necessary but if you're new to sewing and you're finding that there's a lot of pieces of fabric and you don't want them sliding everywhere then you can also just do a basting stitch over the zipper tab and the edge of the lining and the main fabric bag just across there just to hold all of those pieces in place. I think it's just a good extra step to have if you're finding that all of the fabric is moving everywhere and you just want it to stay in place. This is also going to be very helpful because now you have this sort of stitch there that's as a guidance for when you're sewing the top panel here. And kind of like how we did the zipper tabs earlier on, we're going to do this with the top panel by placing it with the frayed edges or like the edge of the fabric facing all the same way and then we're going to sew a straight stitch across the top there and then once you're done with that you're going to flip it back over and do a top stitch over the top there to hold it in place. You can also iron it down to keep it flat as well. Once you're done, here's what that top panel should look like. Yours won't have as much excess fabric as what mine did. I did have to adjust my pattern piece. Now, just like how we did the bottom panel for the lining, we're going to do the exact same for the main part of the bag, except we aren't going to have that excess fabric at the end now because we have the top panel sewn on. So we will pin that and sew across that as well. When you're sewing this part of the bag, you're only catching the lining on the top part, which is where that top panel sort of is. And then for the rest of the bag, you don't want to be catching the lining because you want to be leaving this separate so that you can turn the bag inside out. Cut 
cut off any excess fabric so it's not too bulky and then hopefully you can see this but I have sewn the top of the lining part with the top panel we put on before plus the main fabric of the bag but I've left the rest of the lining separate because we need to turn the bag inside out now. Once you've flipped your bag inside out, you'll notice it's starting to take shape. Leave the ends still inwards as we're going to attach the straps from the inside. And firstly, we're going to finish our straps by turning them inside out. I use a loop turner. You can buy them from Spotlight for pretty cheap. If you can't get one or don't have one, you can also just use a safety pin. Now we're going to iron the straps so that they sit flat and the best way to do this is by pinching the seam and pushing the fabric so that it sits flat then ironing it. Hopefully you can see what I mean by that in the video. The next part we're just going to sew a straight stitch either side of the seam and you can do this about a centimetre or a half centimetre away from the seam. If you'd like you can also do a third stitch straight down the middle. If you've used wadding this will puff the fabric up a little bit. Um, if you haven't then it'll still sit nice and flat. This just kind of holds everything in place. We're almost done but now we're going to attach the straps. This might be a bit confusing but you basically have to pull the end of the bag where the straps go through the lining. Then you'll need to put one end of the strap through from the good side. Once you've pulled it through just pin it at the top here and then you're going to sew a straight stitch across the top. You might have a lot of fabric to go through so just take your time with this and then also if you have any excess fabric like I did then you can just cut this off so that when you flip it inside out you don't have a bunch of fabric and a lot of bulkiness there. Then you'll do the exact same for the other side, however the smaller strap will need to have the D-rings threaded through them and then both raw ends of the strap will go through and be sewn into place. Then all you have to do is pull the straps out through from the good side of the bag and the side that has the D-rings you'll need to have a straight stitch sewn about a half centimetre underneath them. I also switched back over to my zipper foot just as it helps being a lot easier with sewing next to the D-rings because there's a lot of bunching up of the fabric there. This is what it should look like. Yours shouldn't bunch up as much as long as you're using the 38mm D-rings. I was using the ones that were a bit too small. Anyway, now we're going to finish off the lining by sewing a straight stitch across the edge there. Fold about a half centimetre either side of the fabric on the inside of the lining so then you'll just have this sitting nice and flat. You can also do a ladder stitch if you know how to do those, um, that'll just make it close and sit a lot more flatter. Then once you're done with that, it'll just look like this, chop off any loose threads and then we're finally almost done. We're just going to cut off any excess fabric that's left over on the strap and basically how I finish this is I fold the edge over a little bit, kind of in line with where my stitch is and then I fold it over again and push that raw edge underneath it just like that. However, this is a lot of fabric once again if you're worried that your needle might break with this you can also just do a zigzag stitch at the end and then just hem it like regularly. Now we'll thread the strap through the D-rings and pull it through. Then the strap is going to go over the top of the first one and underneath the second one so that it can sit over the top. This makes it adjustable and secure. And then once you're done, this is what it should look like. This is the finished product, a little bit slouchy, very cute. These are 
quite big in size. You can definitely fit quite a lot in here. And of course you have um, the two pockets as well on the sides. You can shove a few extra little goodies and stuff in there. Just for reference, if you're wanting to adjust it, all you have to do is just pull on that part where the D-rings come through. Um, and then you can change the length of the strap as well for that. I love this bag. Hopefully this was a easy tutorial for you guys to follow along. And I hope that I'm able to do a few more this year. I'm hoping to release maybe one pattern a month, but we'll see how we go with that. If you have any questions about sewing the What's Left bag or just any questions in general about my brand, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also feel free to check out my brand down below. I've left the link for in May, the label down there as well. If you recreate this, please tag me. Um, you can tag in May underscore the label on Instagram and also if you want to you can just hashtag in May sewing patterns um, and I can find this I would love to see how you guys recreate this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and yes, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one Bye.